we have James, uh, James Haley from Crossing River. Thank you. Um, I'm get this at the right point. Can everyone hear me? Okay. I'm Jim Halley. I'm a candidate for District 31 in uh, Rhode Island. District 31 makes up, is made up of a portion of North Kingstown and a portion of Exeter. Uh, essentially, I've lived in North Kingstown for, since 1995. I've been uh, superintendent of schools here, and I've been able to take and establish a reputation as of, as someone who gets things done. And that's what I intend to do to help Larry get things done up in the House of Representatives. I have a lot of skills in terms of um, in terms of getting things done. When I first came to North Kingstown, uh, one of the I toured the high school. And I don't know whether any of you were here, but the old North Kingstown High School was basically a, an open space campus, and it was made up of buildings that were separated from one another. In addition to that, it had uh, an open space, uh, like auditorium that was a classroom. My daughter used to say that if she didn't like what was happening in her class, that she could listen to the next class and, uh, and, and still learn something. Uh, we, we were able to take and to identify that as a problem. I found out that we needed $15 million in order to redo the high school. Uh, it, and it would still be the same building that it was. And so what we did is we looked at uh, raising money and building a new high school. We did a plan. We talked with the voters about the plan. We got 80% of the vote uh, was supported. The uh, building the new high school. We were able to build it and we were able to build it in budget and, uh, and on time. So I can get things done for you as a representative in, in the General Assembly. The things that I think are important are, I, and I have a paper over here that you can take a look at. You can also look at my, uh, my website which is on uh, listed on the uh, on the paper. The most important problem that we have right now is that the legislature is supposed to be an organization that makes laws. And they, they're supposed to be making laws that are applicable to everyone. Equally applicable to everyone. However, the laws that are being made right now are not applicable to everyone. They're applicable to special interests, special interests have ended up dominating uh, the legislature and individuals have ended up dominating the legislature. So laws are not being made for the public good. They're being made in a way that makes, that gives benefit to some people and doesn't give benefit uh, to, to other people. And this, until this problem has changed, until we start to make laws that are equitable to all people, then we're still going to have the same type of a problem. So it's a, it's a basically it's it, it's almost a moral problem uh, in terms of uh, in terms of the office. Uh, we also have to make government more efficient and less expensive. Right now, we're relying on the property tax as our primary vehicle for raising money for government, uh, and we that's that is not the way to do it. Uh, our, we we need. Uh, what we're doing is we're pushing down more and more things uh, to the local level so that decisions are being made, not at the state level, but at the local level. And legislators need to make decisions about what's, uh, about what's happening uh, within the state and make laws that support that. For instance, we just heard that we lost the um, race to the top money from the federal government. Uh, Two of the reasons why we lost the race to the top money is that we don't have a law that, that determines what the formula is for giving money to local school districts. We don't have a funding formula. So we lost it because of that. The second thing that we lost it about is uh, because we don't have a data system. As superintendent, I worked for a number of years in establishing a, in trying to establish a data system. We were able to get 16 districts to get involved in it. But because of the way, because we didn't get support from the legislature, because we didn't get support from the Department of Education, 
we now have a data system that's integrated and we can't we don't have the data to ensure that our that our students are successful. Uh, that's one minute, right? Thirty seconds. Thirty seconds. Okay. Uh, I think also we need to attract young people into to stay into the state. We need to support small businesses. Uh, I ask that you look at my materials and that you uh, consider me as a representative, as a person to represent you in District Thirty One. Thank you. Thank you. All right, that's uh, Dawson Hodges. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Dawson Hodgson. I'm your next Republican State Senator for District 35. I'm in this race because I have a vision for Rhode Island of clean, competent government that meets its basic functions. My campaign platform is jobs, fiscal discipline, and government reform. 2010 will see the election of a new government for Rhode Island, one that gets out of the way of small business, holds its public officials accountable, stops the spending. Ooh, yeah. I'm gonna tell you just a little bit about my background. I grew up in a small business. My family owns a turf farm here in North Kingstown. I went to work in the field when I was eight years old. I'm still involved with the company. After 30 years, we're still producing New England's finest sod. But like many of your small businesses, times are tough. We are working harder and smarter than we ever have before. Recently, we made our own investment in the green economy. We're rotating our crops and growing renewable energy. Now, Growing up in a uh, farming family, I learned the value of hard work at a very young age. And I've always had a deep pride in my state and country. So I've been long called to public service. I went to law school to become a prosecutor. That's what I did for the past five years. Putting my heart and soul every day into protecting my community. Putting criminals behind bars was a tremendous responsibility. It was incredibly fulfilling but I'm called to do more. Because above all else, I'm a citizen. And like everyone in this room tonight, I've seen the failure of leadership at all levels of our government. I'm going to fight for an economy that values a Rhode Island education. I am going to fight for opportunities for our children and anyone who's willing to work for them. I'm going to fight for what I believe in, and I'm not going to stop. That's why I'm going to win this election and send our 20-year Democratic incumbent senator to a retirement that is long overdue. 